What's good with everyone? This is your boy, DJ's Raw and Cut Truth. Give you that raw content that you deservedly need. And I got my boy joining me, the rawest of the raw. I got Hoops Jargon, H-Town, Ike. Say what's up to the fans, bro. Yes, sir. What's up, everybody? Hoops Jargon checking in. And you know I'm going to try my best not to disappoint. I'm going to try to bring it, man. So you know what it is. I like this saying, H-Town Ike. <laughs> mm-hmm. start using it <laughs> yeah i know yeah for sure uh so brother what do you think about Jalen green's decision uh there were rumors about him going to the nbl weeks ago uh uh the, and i even just showed you that a uh, picture of the you received it right with the nbl when he was wearing the nbl shirt and memphis hat trying to yes, sir. yeah um I could have sworn it was when I looked at the comment section, everybody thought NBO because they saw how LaMelo did over there and and how well he performed. And they knew Jalen Green was going to perform if he would have went there. Even the Memphis fans are like, oh, he might, he might as well say he's going to the NBL. So this decision, him going to the G League, is a bit of a surprise. I did not see it coming. I heard little ramblings from my homies about – him potentially going to the G League, but let's be honest, I didn't even want to believe it. I mean, you only get paid one twenty five thousand, and I mean, nobody's really that elite took that level. So, what do you think about that, bro? If anything, it's just showing where the new wave is going, man. Fact. People understand that now. Going to college, if you're a one and done prospect, is a joke. It's a joke. Um, look no further than what Ben Simmons said. He went to class for what he said about two months, and after that, he blew all his classes off. And, and it's just kind of funny. People like really like, oh, well, you missing an education. If you're a one and done prospect, that one year of college you got, that ain't got shit to do with the rest of your life, man. Let's be honest, man. Let's be honest. A year of college is not going to set the tone for everything else. So I think when you got guys like Lamelo, you got guys like Jello, you got guys like Jeremy Tyler. Um, uh, Brandon Jennings, Emmanuel Moutier, who have gone that alternative path, and you see that you still can get to the NBA. Now guys are like, you know, you kind of broke that chain, that mental chain. You can see like, okay, I'll go get paid 125 racks and get prepared for the next level, get drafted instead of sitting there as a quote-unquote student athlete not getting paid anything, playing for a university, taking all your money. And so when you see that, obviously, you still can stay on the draft board. Cause it's scary at first, man. When you, when you you know the opportunities there, but you know how these these man, excuse my French. You know how these dick riding sports writers are, man. Yeah. You show, man. If you go against the grain, they're gonna take you off the boards, and then all of a sudden you you're panicking. You don't know how you can get yourself back on. But when you you see the when you see somebody step up and break through that model, i.e. Lamelo Ball, of course you're gonna be more empowered. So now these decisions are gonna be more reflexive, and that's what we're kind of seeing right now. The number one prospect. Going to G League program, like that's crazy, man. Yeah, I I, I really hope he turns the G League around and creates something. Uh, I'm all about options for the young athletes. You don't have to go to college. I'm not anti college either, because if you feel like going to college, go ahead. But really, the options of G League overseas college, you know, really, my dream is the NBA to allow these high schoolers to come out of high school. And here's a problem. They should have never made that rule anyway because every 18-year-old makes a decision, just like an 18-year-old deciding to go to the Army. An 18-year-old that started that decides not to do the original college and do a trade. It's no different. See, I hate when government bodies like the NBA le- NBA leagues and the NCA leagues, when they when they make rules and they ch- try to act like they care, say we don't <laughs> want them to make the bad decisions. No, that's their decision to make. Absolutely. If they flop in the NBA, that's on them. That's not your job to tell them what type of player they could be and all that stuff in college. Did you know? And I have to say this. Did you know that? People who get their four-year degrees and bachelor degrees, they complete them, are in their 30s when they go back to school. 
I didn't know that, but I, um, I have three degrees, and I can definitely see that because I ain't using now one of them right now with my profession. See? Yep. <laughs> I, I got an associate's, a bachelor's, and a master's, bro. I ain't using now one of them right now. For, uh, I'm, a, you know, I'm a salesman. I ain't using now one of them right now, so I'm not one Me of either. them. Huh? <laughs> I said, me neither. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Like, I'm not one of them dudes thinking education trumps all. Like, man, having a skill, having a trade, having a hustle. Man, you you can you can circumvent a lot of that, man, and and then I think that was a great point you brought up too about how these governing bodies try to lie to themselves. Well, they're not lying to themselves; they know what they're doing, but they lie to the masses. Like, oh well, we just protecting these kids because look at the guys who come in; they don't make it. And I'm with you, like, so what? That's their choice. Just like they got the right to vote, like you said, the right to go to the military, they can smoke cigarettes. I think they just upped it to 21, but. All these liberties you have at 18, you can be sovereign from your parents. So don't don't try to play this game like you're looking out for them for a year. You're in cahoots with the NCAA. It's like a, a gentleman's backdoor agreement. Like, hey, I'm going to funnel these people to you. We're going to keep this buffer there so at least you still can eat off these off these names. And it's just funny when they when they try to pitch it to you a different way, when you know damn well what the real agenda is. I look at it like the government. You know, I don't want to go too deep in the political spectrum, but when they got these mandates to buckle up, or you get a fine. They don't give a shit about if you you crash and all this stuff. That's just another way that if you get pulled over with no seatbelt, they can tax your ass. So it, it's always a hand serving, a, feeding another hand, man. And it's just funny when they kind of pitch it that way. Like they're looking out for the better middle of that player. I mean, if you really have the discernibility, you really can peep game. You know exactly what they're doing, bro. Yeah, man, you spend that heat, brother. Um... Yes, yeah, it's, it's all an agenda. They don't care about these players. They cared about the players. Um, why don't you have money saved up for seniors? Because you know how it is when you're in the real world, getting out of college. And, you know, you're looking for a job or so. They don't set anything up for seniors. Yeah. And, and some of the people that may listen to this and may say, it's not the uh, NCAA's job to always pay for everything. That's not what I'm saying. Uh, I'm saying something simple. If you're if you're playing a certain sport like football, men's basketball, who generates a lot of money, you put in there in there like a contract, whatever the scholarship that we will give you a percentage of money. Now I'm not saying millions of dollars. I'm not saying that. I'm just saying like something. Shoot, it could be uh, thirty thousand. It could be you know something. Yeah. For each senior who graduates. They got enough money to do that, and that would be, and that be appealing to people who who take college seriously. Hey, let me do this college thing, man. Um, I get a four year, I get my degree, and then I get some money as a senior after I leave. And, and brother, I take it another step. If they really gave a shit about these athletes, bro, the scholarship system as it stands would not be a one to one year renewable scholarship. It would be a Four year guaranteed ride. You know, if you get hurt, no matter if you weren't what they expected from you or whatever, they really care about a student athlete like they say they do. It wouldn't be a one to one year renewable, man. And I say that because I've seen, I've coached and played, obviously, at the Division One level. I've seen dudes lose their scholarship just because A, they don't like their parents, the coaches, that is. B, they're just not as good as they thought they were. C, they're a little injury prone, so they just don't. They want to look for a better athlete. Before they just kind of like, eh, I'm looking for a new toy. I want something a little better. So you can lose your scholarship for all these reasons. And it's perfectly fine under the, the governing body of the NCAA. So if they really care, if they really want to look out for the student athlete, quote unquote, is what they say, you would give a guaranteed four year scholarship for the person. If you really care about that student like that. And the fact that they can go. Bro, I, I I know a partner. I ain't gonna say the college because you know I don't want you know how these trolls fishing for <laughs> information. Let's just say he played for Conference USA for football. I'm gonna say it like that. Okay. The, the, he said the coach, uh, not threatened, but like gave him an ultimate. He had an injury, like his thyroid uh, thigh contusion and stuff, and he didn't want to play the spring game, uh, just to look bad. When he's not a hundred percent, and the coach insinuated that he had to play to keep his scholarship. Yeah, I kid you not. And so he played the spring game, had a back spring game. You know how hard it is to play with a thigh contusion. 
Yeah. Uh, especially as a defensive back. Yeah. And then, That's all your explosion. Yeah, for sure. Yeah. Can't change your hips. You can't. Yeah. Didn't end well. Didn't end well. So they could take your scholarship. They don't talk about this. That's why I'm not tripping when uh, athletes transfer. I mean, if you could take someone's scholarship away, you could definitely transfer. Yeah. And, it, and it, it's a bully culture. So if you are a transfer, man, who said it not too long ago? Uh, this is my man's uh, the coach of uh, Alabama. Uh, Nick Saban was saying he he's leery of kids who, who switch schools. And, and from a coach standpoint, I get it. You want a kid who's committed. You want a guy who's going to stay in your program. I understand the sentiment, but it's a double-edged sword. So you're saying that a kid in a in a messed up situation just got to sit there and ride the bench or be with a match that don't match. He can't transfer and, and practice his own flexibility. So that bully culture puts kind of like a shit stain on you if you, you know what I mean, exercise your own right to be able to go to the transfer portal and go to the school of, if you're choosing after, like, the first one is the match. So you you got to watch that, man. It's a very, very big slippery slope, and they try to use those rules to kind of put kids in a, in, a, in a space where you can't really thrive and, you know, uh, be in the most advantageous situation based on a, a first decision you have made to commit to a certain school. Yeah, man, it's – they're not getting this type of talk anywhere else, man. This is the real. This is DJ's raw and cut truth, drawn by the homie Hoops Jargon. You know it. Uh, yeah, H Town brother right here. Yes, sir. You know, no, I gotta bring the real. So Lamelo, man. Um, what do you What do you think about how people think of him? Like they, I think they lose their minds sometimes. Hey? They forget that he's going to be the youngest player in this draft, mm -hmm. but they critique him more than everybody else. And then some of the shines and haters will call us a Lamelo Ball stan or fan. It's no different than when I rooted for uh, Kobe Bryant when I was young. I'm not saying he's Kobe. I'm just saying, like, when you're a fan of someone, when you're a fan of someone, you take a liking to their interests, like everybody. Mm -hmm. Everybody's a fan of someone. So why is it different when we make videos giving props or even videos where we could uh, give constructive criticism? Well, I think you and AB, man, hit it perfectly yesterday, man. Um, what you'll see is, well, y'all kind of alluded to the fact that when he got taken off the draft board and then when he got back on, he got all these critiques where other guys were kind of getting one or two sentences about their evaluation and kind of moving on, who were like a lot, quote unquote, ranked higher than, than LaMelo. But all of a sudden, LaMelo got this full page of evaluation. It tells you two things, man. One is sports writers, sports evaluators, whomever, they are some of the, the, the biggest weirdos of, of, of all, bro. And uh, shout out to my boy Chris, man. He had a, he had a, um, a, a live session with uh, T.O., man, about two weeks ago. Uh, my boy C. Hendo. Um, T.O. was talking about how the Hall of Fame did him. And, you know, he, he, he holds no, he pulls no punches at all about how he feels about the Hall of Fame committee. And, you know, T.O., you can call him a lot of things, but T.O. is right about that, man. These are nerd dudes who sit around and they just, excuse my French again, they dick ride the next man's evaluation. And they're not really doing a sound ev evaluation on their own. So all they're doing is just, you know, back in high school, you look on somebody else's paper and you, you write down the same thing. You think they smart? Same shit, bro. Same shit. So you have people who kind of have an axe to grind against LaMelo. So they'll, they'll lambaste him with all these critiques that they won't do for the next person because, A, they don't have the capacity to sit there and watch film and really break it down. LaMelo gets a lot of face time. So it's a little easier to kind of see what he does good and what he does bad because – whether they understand it or not, they're, they're, they're drawn to it. You know what I mean? So, and then you got to actually grind and try to prove the father wrong. So, of course, you're going to try to try your hardest to, to nitpick and see what you can see wrong because you see him succeeding, but you've already declared that he ain't, you know, what people think. So, you got to go and nitpick and try to justify your opinion. And that's what you see, man. And, and it's unfortunate that that's the culture and that's what people do. And I think more like former athletes who actually can evaluate the game need to have some, you know, more say in that. Because what you see is that that, that dick riding culture, man, 
where these dudes kind of just form a, a brotherhood to stand against a certain player. And, and that's why you see the over-evaluations with a cat like that. And then again, with somebody else where you actually can sit down and break down tape, one, they can't, and two, they're not because they don't have an extra grind. So I think that's why you see LaMelo get, you know, uh, over-evaluated where his peers, like you was mentioning uh, as well in that video, like Cole Anthony don't get that same type of heat. Or like James Wiseman, who played like, what, four games, five games? Or something like that? Yeah. He's he not getting that heat either. Like, how do you know what he's doing? Like, he, he's been personally training since about, what, uh, November? Like, how do you know what he is right now? You know what I mean? But you yeah, it's the dumbest thing. thing. They, they know man. about him. And they they know his work at the – you don't know that kid, man. Exactly. You're just assuming. Yeah, and that's the problem with the whole world. We assume too much, man. We assume and don't let things play out. One thing, I'm giving an update. Uh, now, it just confirmed that. Jalen Green has uh, signed with the G League, and the G League is upping his salary to 500K. Damn. Yeah. I just retweeted it. Damn. <laughs> that's heavy, dude. But I understand why the NBA is doing it. They're doing it for him. So, I mean, that's the only way that they can make that move. Yeah. Well, well the NBA doing it for them. That, that's an investment. Yeah, for him. <laughs> for- <laughs> he gonna be the poster child of this, of this new step. So of course you. Yeah, go this is a this is yeah. a I call it an investment payment. Yeah, right. <laughs> one year five hundred k. There's a lot of players that ain't getting one year five hundred k. Shit, the lower it. end players, they wish they could get four years five hundred k. He got <laughs> one year five hundred k. Facts. He boy, that boy, the wedding, team, man. That <laughs> that's good though. That's a good move for the NBA, man. They, they got to get ahead of this wave because, like I say, the metal ball effect, man. He's shown like you can go opposite way and still be high on the draft board. So all that, you know, that that monkey, that proverbial monkey, came off people's back of like you know fear. Whereas like you know, uh, yeah, but I know the avail- the availability there, but the, the scouts not gonna give me no love and they're not gonna watch my games and nah bullshit. But when you take that fear away, man, it's, it's gonna be it's gonna be a revolving door, man. Watch, this is gonna be move one of many, man. Uh, the next step for the NBA, they got they're gonna make everything. I mean, Jalen Green is gonna be a top five pick no matter what, talent wise. Mm-hmm. But they're definitely gonna make sure that no team bypasses him. Oh yeah, you gotta be, for 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 this to work for the G League, you gotta have um, Jalen Green be drafted in the top five. No team, like if a team doesn't want him, they're going to trade that. <laughs> you know how the NBA roll, but Jalen Green is top five no matter what, no matter what moves the NBA makes. But they're definitely going to assist, if you get what I mean. Just oh, like I think the NBA is going to assist on LaMelo to go to New York. Unless something weird happens, like the Cavaliers or something pick that. <laughs> God, I hope not, man. I'm, I'm sick of the Cavaliers. Not, yeah. Their fans, so their fans are shitty, bro. They were like, "Oh man, we have no use for him. We got Darius Garland and Sex." <laughs> Sex. <Yeah. laughs> okay, tell me more about y'all. Eleven wins this year. <laughs> tell me more about your eleven fucking wins. But yeah, you're right, and I think they have uh, more invested in Jalen because Jalen is like gonna be the He's gonna be the, you know, the the prototype of this program, of this G League to NBA pipeline. So you talking about some James Harden calls? This boy gonna be getting man. <laughs> you, you hit the nail around right the head, brother. Like it's it's gonna be you have to because you I mean well a lot of people kind of trick themselves. I mean basketball is what I love, man. We, you know that's pretty obvious, but the NBA thrives on storylines, man, and narratives, and. The way you keep those narrative and storylines going is you, you got to manipulate things a little bit. I mean, I'm a big Lakers fan. We, the way we beat the Kings in 0-2, that was some of the biggest crock of bullshit I've seen in my life. And you know I ain't lying, bro. The favorite yeah, calls know. we got. <laughs> bullshit. Because no, you know I'm a Lakers fan, too. And uh, yeah. Even though I don't – because people always tell me, you're not a real Lakers fan because you don't make videos of Lakers. I don't have any favorite players of the Lakers. I just yeah. watch them and hope they win. But I'm not gonna be talking about LeBron all day. I'm not a LeBron fan like that. So, yeah. I mean, that's not me. Oh, I'm gonna kiss up to LeBron and make videos about him every day. I ain't gonna be doing that. 
Yeah. But uh, uh same way. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, you see what I'm saying, bro? Yeah. But uh uh what the Lakers <laughs> you hit the nail on the head with that. I thought the Lakers got through like man. Uh I'm not gonna complain, but man, we did screw screw the Kings. Screw them, bro. You know, I, I'm okay with in my in my fandom to to acknowledge that you know and, and understand how politics work, how the NBA works. And I remember the old school cats used to tell me back in the day, the NBA rig, NBA rig. And, you know, me as a basketball period, I'm like, man, no, it ain't. You don't know what you're talking about, old school. But when you kind of see how <laughs> certain things with Tim Donahue saying how they were encouraged to, you know, you know, influence games by giving certain guys more fouls and what have you. It's not fully rigged, but they, they, they do understand how to guide, you know, certain narratives, man. And, and I'm just not oblivious to that no more. And it, it's, it sucks from, from a purity standpoint, but you got to understand it's a business at the end of the day. So I say all that, say this. I, I don't see them letting uh, Jalen Green fail at all. I don't see it happening at all. Nah, they, they they're going to they give him everything he wants. They, they're they banking on this. This is, like I said, that 500 case and one year at that uh, investment. If they get that right, a lot of kids will be going to the G League. Yeah. But here's yeah. the thing. I don't. I don't think a lot – once the, a batch of kids go to the G League, I don't think they're going to get that much. But Jalen Green was the starter kid. Exactly. He's a starter kid. So you, you got to put money into your starter kid, especially the number one overall prospect. I mean, that's kind of a no-brainer. When I read that, I said I was smart. Yeah. <laughs> Adam Silver, he know what he's doing. Boy, don't he? <laughs> yeah, yeah, I got to give him credit on that, man. Man, you, you take these NBA owners, uh, especially those brothers from that Jewish descent, they understand how to make money, man. There's nothing else in this yeah, world. <laughs> it's just college pay to pay. I don't, I don't be dissing them. I mean, they know yeah. how to make money. But I'm hey, just people that's successful. That's their thing. So, and it's okay. Like, you want to run a successful league that is, you know, the second probably arguably most popular league in the world? Of course you're going to understand the money aspect. You have to. You know what, there. brother? You know what, brother, this dawned on me, man, because me and A.B. the Hero talked about this yesterday, about LeVar and this league. Now, everybody was criticizing LeVar's league in the JBA and the JBA USA, but they finished their leagues and even had a championship in the league. XFL, AFL did not finish their league. They had more money backed into it. The AFL had $200, uh, $200 million invested. And then blew through the money and didn't invest in it right. Where you have the um, you know XFL did not save up enough money for a crisis. They couldn't handle a crisis, yeah. so they folded. Then you got the JBA, and the JBA USA tour ended early. Not the U, not the regular JBA. The JB, the regular JBA had a championship, completed it. The JBA USA team pl- played a lot of their games and then played that finale. A lot of players were injured. Yeah, people yeah. forget that. A lot of players were injured, so it changed the trajectory on things. I'm not going to say it was the main decision why Lavella mm-hmm. went to Spire. Yeah. But those well, injuries yeah. took a toll. It, it took a toll, man, because at the end of the day, man, the, the meal ticket of that. Of that experience is selling Lamelo and Leang- I mean, uh, and Leangelo. So obviously, if you know injuries take away from that aspect, you are taking away a big part part. And I think after we saw the uh, what we went on with, I mean, like you say, the JBA going all the way through, man, and giving away those Cadillacs to, to the, the winners and what have you. Um, now, one thing I will say is. The XFL, yes, they made that faux pas not putting that clause, that insurance clause. Like, I think the Wimbledon tournament did. It's like the first Wimbledon that's not being played like in 100 years or something like that, but they got that insurance thing where they still got paid. Yeah, they should have been a little more business, business savvy, but I won't take too much away from them because this is a once-in-a-lifetime pandemic thing. Like, I mean, we've never seen it. <laughs> like, ever. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? But the, the AFL, it, it's no excuse there. They, they, they tricked their money off. And they messed them players up, and they built it up. And it's funny how the media was backing it so hard, too. You remember, man. The media yeah, was like, like about the average glory. play. Like, they see one big hit, and they talk about, oh, my God, I've never seen a move like that. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. 
the shit crazy if you just oppose it with how they was trying to, you know, every now and then they would cover the, the JBA and they would always talk about no defense. They talk about nobody in the, in the crowd. So you, you see how the fix is in about how they choose to report. You know what I mean? What they deem as what they like and what they don't like, bro. So it's it's hilarious to sit back and watch, man. Bro, why why do they avoid ninety? They don't even talk about the success stories of some of the players who are who play overseas. Yeah, even Harrison Rieger, who you know a fan favorite. Yeah, who had to fight for his minutes on a JBA USA team, found a way to play overseas. That's a success story. That's a tremendous success story, and but again, it shows you how the fix is in, man. Like, why would you? Well, let me let me back up. Playing overseas is hard as shit. If you didn't play at a, a reputable school and you don't have that clout like that, it is very hard to get an overseas contract because those guys, the, all they care about is Division One schools and and reputable Division One schools. So if you didn't go that traditional path, it is real hard to get those contracts. And the Vars League got some guys, some good situations like 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 you you alluded to, like with Harrison Rieger. Who you know a hustle guy who had a little sneaky athleticism, but just a a guy. He, he's a team guy. He's a guy about he's about winning. He's about passion. But win and passion don't translate to a professional contract. I'm sure more than you know a million some of our brothers can attest to that. So the fact that he was able to use that profile within the JBA confines and build his profile to be a professional athlete and a main fixture overseas that tells you the. The, the good that that uh that league gave and but again the media's not interested in it they'll, they they wanted to basically chastise that league and, and basically use it by proxy to say hey that LeVar ball he going against the grain this ain't no dude you need to be following so of course you're always gonna report the bad report, reporting the good just goes against your agenda so that's why you're never gonna see that brother yeah you're definitely not gonna see that um curtis hollis he just entered the draft shout out to curtis hollis Baller. A lot, a lot, a lot of players. You know, he he was a baller. I I used to love watching him play because he did much. He'll guard the best player. Yep. He'll slash. He'll handle the ball some. He very versatile, and I always say versatility is the best way of getting into the NBA. Yes, yeah, that, that's a great point, and it's kind of it kind of trails into what y'all was saying about Jello, is because next level. You can have all these redeeming skills, but it's like, how does your skills translate to the pro level? How can you impact the defense with your skill set when the skill set is in the NBA? Everybody can hoop now. You know, people be trying to get reckless and say about, oh, man, that boy, bum, he trash. That dude you think is a bum will get your ass 60 in, in, in a gym. And make no mistake. <laughs> Ryan, Brian Scalabrini is, is everybody's whipping boy. Everybody love to talk noise. Man, Ryan will give you 60. Ryan Hollis. Yeah, he, if he goes into a gym, Ryan Hollis as well. We make fun of him. 60. He'll give a lot of people buckets. Buckets. And he's seven foot. At the end of the day, I get it. Ryan Hollis is a goofy motherfucker. I, I understand why people don't like him. But I understand he averaged about 1.8 points in the NBA. I get it. That dude's seven foot tall, man, athletic as hell. You, the average Joe, ain't got nothing for that boy, man. So people really don't understand the talent separation that when you're the best of the best of the best, you know, a person you think ain't that good, in a normal setting, they're going to run the table on motherfuckers, man. And so I think a guy who's versatile, you can find your, your niche. Like, you find out, you know, based on your size and your capability, where does your many skill sets fit into something that you can tap into every day, every night? And so, you know, I think with a guy who's versatile like that and also like Jello, you know, you got opportunities to fill multiple roles based on team needs. And so I think that's a very valuable trait to have, man, for next level. Yeah. And, uh, and I'm going to piggyback to LaMelo. They're going to they're gonna look at this Jalen Green move, which is different. And they're going to look at the move before it. And they're going to say that what LaMelo did was – was was different. The first sixteen year old pro from yep. America to go overseas. He yep. started. He started it. No matter what these shines say, he started it. He made the trend. He is the trend. Yep. This is not me being on Lamelo Jock or anything else. This is facts. 
And this is a reason why he's famous. This is the reason why he has 5.5 million followers on Instagram. Mm -hmm. It's the reason why if he didn't have basketball, he'd still get paid. That's how popular he is. And now with all the players that realize, hey, I got power. LaMelo showed them that. And that's why they taking that lead. You know, LaMelo was the one riding the Lambo at 16. Yeah. I mean, he was the one setting the trends. So, what you said about LaMelo, he's the godfather of all of the young play. I call it the young player empowerment. Yep. He's the face of it. LaMelo is to that young player mover to where LeBron was to guys sign these short-term deals now, dictating where they want to play, pretty much dictating their teammates they want, and change the free agency game. It's going to be it's, – it's, to me, he's that same type of um, beacon of that new type of mentality for players. Watch it. Yeah, he is. And they were it's trying pretty- to um, – and a lot of these nerve um, – Journalists who have no life, <laughs> uh, they're struggling quarantine the most because they ain't got no girl by their side. That's another discussion. <laughs> but, uh, you know, they, they talking about, well, these players shouldn't take the – I remember someone had an article saying these players shouldn't take the uh, route that LaMelo has because he does have a lot of those followers, and they don't. They only have 200,000. That's not the point. Uh, it's about power. Them 200,000 followers they got. That's something. Mm-hmm. You may, it may not be LaMelo. See, it doesn't have to. That's what we, we, we all as a society get mis, mixed up. Just because we don't have as much as someone else doesn't mean we can make something out of it. Bingo. Trust me, 200 plus followers, fans, that's somebody, that's, that's as much people interested in you. Yep. That's money, no matter what. And it's the reason why the G League is paying Jalen Green more money than any anybody in history of the G League. It has to be. I've never heard of anybody in the G League getting 500K in one year, all guaranteed. Agreed. Agreed. And, I mean, that's just kind of, again, showing the, the, the power of once you tap into that that uh that, that that king spirit of yours, man, and you understand that because Lamelo did it back when it still was a lot of doubt about you going against convention, man, and him going, you know, to Lithuania back when everybody said there was a horrible idea. So much so they took him off the draft board. He come out like a phoenix out the ashes. Now he's a guaranteed top three, top five prospect, and did not go that way. So yeah, man, it's it's a beautiful thing to see people kind of seeing that. Okay. If I don't have a dad like, you know, LeVar, as far as with how people, you know, judge him or decide that he he isn't up to snuff, if I just stay on the radar and just go a opposite way and I won't be judged, then, yeah, I'll do it because I'd rather get paid than sit in, in class with some shit I don't want to learn about, that I don't care about, at a school who traditionally I don't give a shit about. Yeah, I'll go do that <laughs> and get paid. You know what I'm saying? Let's keep it G, man. Yeah. Let's keep it G. It's a beautiful thing, though, man. It's free enterprise. That's how it's supposed to be. So they say. They act like they're about free enterprise. But when you go against the, you know, when you go against that money game, man, then that's when all them problems come up, bro. They think they got us fooled. They don't fool me. You'll never see me say I hate capitalism. I know I know the difference between good capitalism and crony capitalism. Yeah. You know, I like capitalism. I like the fact that I can make money on the side uh, without, you know, you know, you can do it the right way and still get money off your name, off your brand. That's that's exciting to me. Yeah. Yeah. You know, they would never fool me and tell me it's not about. I mean, they would never fool me and tell me that capitalism is a bad thing. It's not a bad thing. Our ancestors who own businesses thrived from it, mm-hmm. like Wall Street did and many mm-hmm. others. So you, they would never have me go against that. Yep, and and if you let them do it though, they they will, man. And and this is shown time after time, man. It's it's what do they say, man. The pen is more mighty than the sword, man. So yeah, you, exactly. You, you control the narrative. You control people's mentalities, and so it's it's 
important, especially for us brothers, to understand the slide of hand. Like, don't don't be susceptible to these 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 waves and people dictate to you how you should feel. Use your own goddamn discernment, man. Understand what's going on. Be able to peep game because they they're trying to play you, man. And I, I can't be no more forthright about that. They're trying to play you. Yeah, man, brother. I want to thank you for uh, joining the show. You know, you're one of the favorites of mine because you know you keep it raw and uncut, just like yes, the sir. name title is. <laughs> yes, sir. Uh, I also want to say to the viewers, my channel is is only for the real. Uh, I can't speak for everybody. I, I I don't know what you guys like, but in my channel, we're not gonna sugarcoat anything. We're not gonna just pussyfoot around. We're gonna tell it how it is give it our opinion and you know i'm an h-town cat i don't i don't i, I never grew up being pc correct and just <laughs> fiddling around I, you know i'm gonna tell it raw that's how I, that's why i named the show dj's raw uncut truth because you ain't gonna out of all the ball channels you're not gonna hear it like this i tell you that i mean you're gonna get everything on this show <laughs> uh, make sure you s subscribe to the homie hoops jargon another real one he has amazing content. Has an interview with Cheryl Swoops. Check that out. What's Cynthia Cooper? Cynthia Cooper. Cynthia Cooper. Sorry about that. <laughs> Close. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Man, you know, I grew up in Houston. You know, how Cooper and uh, Swoops. Yeah, Cooper. it's easy to mix them up. Tango, man. You know what I'm talking yeah. about. <laughs> Cynthia Cooper. Cynthia Cooper. Legend. Legend. The WNBA's legend. Yeah, go go check that video out on Hoops Jargon. I'll put the link out on my video. So Appreciate that, bro. Yeah, you know, I'm all about supporting everybody. That's what people got to do in times like this, especially if you're a brother. You got to support people. You look at all these channels, and especially no matter if they talk about basketball, ball family content, or anything else, sports, you don't see a lot of people and this is not me bragging by myself, but this is like I want them to do this. I want people with big channels. Go interview someone you're cool with online. Help them start their channel up. But they here's the problem. They want to be at the top, brother. Yeah. They want to they want to get all the views. But <laughs> this is YouTube. Everybody can win. Yeah. I agree, I man. I don't yeah, care yeah, if I got yeah, sorry about that. I don't care if I got 400 subs or a million. I still think I'm the best at what I do. There you go. Yeah, and I appreciate you, man. And and so, I'm not, you know, I, I want to hop on the scene. I've probably been doing this for about a month and a half. I was something I've been scared to do for about three, four years, man. It's it's tough when you put yourself out there, man, and, you know, you don't know how people will receive you or what have you. But I know I got a lot of people I can contact. I know, you know, over my career playing and coaching, I have a lot of connections, but you just never know really how to put it together, man. So I really appreciate you taking me under your wing and kind of giving me an exposure because you just never know what lane to go in and if people going to like your stuff or not. So I just want to remain humble on that aspect, even though I've done and seen and I know a lot of people. You just never know how it's going to turn out on that, on that back end when you put your content out there. So I really appreciate yeah. you. you putting me on game, man, and, and give me opportunities for people to hear my voice, man. Yeah, uh, thank you for giving me my respect, bro. You know, I, that's all I want. Is, it's all about respect, like Jake Prince says. Yeah. It's not like you want to hear someone t always tell you, man, thank you for helping me out. But it's 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 good to know that you, that what you're doing as a person is helping others. And that's what that respect comes in. And I want to thank you, brother, for respecting me. Uh, that's why I share every time, just like the uh, Cynthia Cooper video, I yeah. shared it, make sure Sorry. everybody listened to it. And what I'm about to do now, sharing it, because I want your channel to grow. Because there, there can be more channels. So I got a couple of partners. I try to convince every day. I'm like, man, if you're on YouTube, like my boy Gibson. Yeah. Gibson had a YouTube. Oh, my God. <laughs> oh, my God. If Gibson had a YouTube, he would be turning up. Because <laughs> he, he ain't holding back for nobody. Man, it's I want to give two shout outs if you allow me to, man. The people. Oh, I yeah, for sure. Family. For sure. One, I got a cat in, in my sports group. Uh, his name is The Slap, man. He's from Houston, too, bro. He is the most countryest dude ever. He is a damn fool. He's been doing his YouTube thing for a minute. 
but he don't get the views like that. But he's been consistently making the show for six years. And even got to a point he got, you know, got a little down about people not watching him. I'm like, bro, keep putting your content out. So I want my shit to crack some more. And I'm going to bring the slap on. He, he's, he is hilarious. I, I mean, I, you got to bring him on. I got to bring the slap on. You're you going to see exactly what I mean. He is hilarious, but he knows his sports. He's hilarious. <laughs> so I'm going to make the slap in here. Second, man, this is Cat. Uh, he played for the Rockets, man. His name is Tier Brown, man. He's kind of like no chill Gill, ex-NBA player who just got all the jokes, got all the funny. So I'm trying to get that boy on, man. He, he's a Facebook funny guy, but he don't really fool with this YouTube game. So I'm trying to get him interviewed and get him on. So be on the lookout for that, too. I'm going to try to get Tier on here, man. Oh, yeah. We got to set, set that up, man. We call it, we'll call call it the H-Town panel, man. <laughs> the H-Town panel. We that better go be in. bro. It'll be hilarious, dog. <laughs> yeah, yeah, definitely bring them on, man. I'm all about growing, man. And, and you got it all figured out, bro, because you're doing one thing right. You're being patient with all this. You could have easily just, like, quit if you just had a 50-view video. Yeah. You stuck it out. And, you know, like I told you, I'm willing to help as well. If you need me to join your show, just let me know. But I'm all about helping all brothers because there's I, enough yeah. pie left. Facts. And I appreciate it because I know it's going to be a slow burn. So I, I don't really just go out of my mind. I just want to talk about stuff that people want to hear about. Uh, I'm at sitting about 162 uh, subs off an account that set on like 20 subs for forever. So I'm happy about that growth, man. So when it, when it pop off, it'll pop off. I know everything happens in its own time. So I'm, I'm here for the process, man. So I'm with it. Man. Yeah, definitely, man. Y'all heard it first from Hoops Jargon, man. Support that brother's channel. Uh, I'll post a link on my page. Uh, everyone who's following my channel, you follow Hoops Jargon. He's a real one. He's an H Townite. I like that word, by the way. <laughs> and, and it, you heard, you just heard this content. You're gonna get the same realness and raw content at my channel that you'll see at his. I guarantee it. Peace and blessings to everybody.